This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. The first component that we want to deal with is the processor, also known as the microprocessor or central processing unit, CPU. And so you hear a lot of people probably just refer to it as the CPU, and in, in some cases they're actually talking about their whole computer. You know, they say the CPU and they point to the box. Uh, that represent, you know, that is the, the desktop computer. Well, accurately, the CPU is certainly the heart of the personal computer, and it's the real brains of the operation. But it is just one component. It's not the whole thing. We don't use that term to talk about the whole box. The CPU is the central processor chip. It's actually a single microchip that single-handedly performs every calculation that has to be performed on a computer system. Uh, these things are busy and they are fast, uh, run at incredibly high rates of speed, and because of that, it's generating a lot of heat. So if you look inside a modern computer, you're not going to see the chip. Okay, you're not just going to see a flat microchip sitting there. Uh, you will instead see a big cooling assembly, uh, which includes heat sinks and fans and, and sometimes exhaust out of the computer. And newer computers, they're getting really, really fancy. And that's just because these high rates of speed, it generates a lot of heat. What do I need to know about the processor? Well, we, we could probably just say it's involved in absolutely everything that you do. The processor does all the calculations, but let's kind of use that in an example to give us a little bit better of an idea. Okay, so consider this example of opening a calculator program. The processor takes the input of clicking on the program from the mouse. So I clicked my start menu and the processor then displayed the start menu and I found the calculator program and I opened it. The processor is going to make a call to the hard disk. And the hard disk is where the program is actually located. And so the hard drive locates the program on the hard, uh, or excuse me, the processor locates the program on the hard disk. The processor then sends the program to a memory location. Okay, memory is storage, it's not permanent storage, and it's where programs will, uh, will be when they're up and running. So the processor gets it off the hard drive and puts it into memory. Once the program's loaded, then the processor informs the video card to display the program onto the screen. Okay, now I come into play and I enter in a number and I add another number. The processor then gets those two numbers and performs the calculation of them and then sends the results out to the video card. Okay, now that's actually a fairly simplistic example of how the processor is used. But it gives us an idea in that, the, or it gives us the idea that the processor is really integral in every little part of that example. Initially to open the program uh, and, and then to actually perform calculations in the program. And it doesn't have to be a calculator program in order for you to be using the processor. You're going to use the processor for absolutely everything you do. So when we say and use the term CPU, we're not talking about the computer itself. We're talking about the brains of the computer, the single microprocessor chip that is involved in every uh, activity that the computer is involved in. Now, that processor has to get information from somewhere. In the next section, we'll look at how we use the different components on the personal computer to store information.